Okay, this here is a big pile of me not practicing what I preach. I mean, you guys know, or you're going to know now if you missed the, the last episode. So I'm just about to do a comparison between some really good salvage, raw salvage denim jeans and a pair of fashion jeans that both cost the same price. I just, I'm curious, I'm curious, I'm curious to see what the difference is. I'm curious to see where the the money goes in terms of fashion jeans. I know where it goes in terms of raw salvage denim jeans, but I don't know where the money goes in terms of fashion jeans. So I bought a pair of expensive fashion jeans. I bought a pair of Romani jeans on Zalando. Zalando's like a big online retailer. And then after that, out of necessity, I would say, I kind of went down the ordering online rabbit hole a little bit because I, I, we're going away uh, next week and yeah, I, I needed some things for, for vacation, some, some shorts and some flip-flops and things. The kind of things that are a little bit hard to get in October in Berlin. I mean, it's just out of season. So yeah, I don't know. Whoops. And by the way, this is from yesterday. I'm not day drinking, at least not yet. Yeah, I, I don't know which um, package has the jeans in. We'll see in a, in a second. And also, Zalando, I, I pressed the button to say, like, please offset my carbon and please deliver everything in one box. And you haven't done that, so bad. Uh, that's not Zalando, that's Amazon. What's in here? This is for me. Lots of packages getting delivered from my neighbors, so... Yep, Matt Wilson. Sports shorts, which I forgot that I ordered on Amazon and ordered on Zalando as well. Ah oh well. More sports shorts. I don't think these were the ones I ordered though. Uh-huh. Uh... -huh. uh yeah, okay, Zalando. So far, you're doing really good. And two identical pairs of Dicky shorts in the same size that I definitely didn't order. Well, I didn't order two of them. Uh, right, thank God for free returns. But, A, where are the sandals that I did order? And B, where are my fashion jeans? Last chance. There we go. Let's have a look at the very first impressions. Or no, I'm going to do this when they're both together, when both pairs of jeans are together. So I need the, I need to clean up and then I need the 316 jeans. And those are from a packet I threw away over there. We've started to uh, collect our first baby stuff. It seems that everybody in Berlin has been picking this moment to have children. All of uh, various uh, newnesses, new, various um, young ages. And these things grow out of clothing like, like that. So everybody's very happy to just pass along the love, which is great. That's a little baby chair from um, from a neighbor of ours. Um, super, super kind of them, it's really appreciated. Right, um, what jeans did I say I was gonna use again? The SL100X, SL100X, right? I just don't quite know where those are. So just got a sample box back from a store in the UK. 
See, since we've not been able to travel for the last couple of years, what I've been doing is I've been putting together like little sample packages and sending them out to the stores so they can, um, they, they can actually get their hands on the fabric and really feel what 316 is about. And yeah, uh, they're, all these guys are totally honest, of course, and they package it up nicely and return it to us. So let's see if I included it in this box, because that would be an awful lot easier than if I had it in the big sample bag, which is buried behind that curtain. Behind that curtain is just, that's where chaos is made. Uh, indigo dyed sweat. Then we have SL101X, that's the lightweight selvage. Then we've got the NT100X, uh, which is not the SL. Last chance, but I don't think it is. We have our heavyweight tees. And then we've got the CS100XK. Hmm. Okay, so behind the curtain it is. Okay, here's something interesting, a bit of an aside. I just had a pair of my jeans repaired and they made a super, super good job. Like uh, all jeans after a while, they're gonna go in the crotch. I was starting to see a little bit of a crotch blowout. So I stopped wearing them immediately, which I, I'm not very good at doing. Usually I just have massive crotch blowouts, which is much more time consuming and expensive to repair. I took them to a place along in Mitte in Berlin and they made, I'd say they made a pretty good job. So there's a couple of different ways that you can go about repairing your jeans. You could do it yourself. I don't recommend that unless you're very good at it. You can send it off to somewhere with a darning machine, which is, I guess that's the best way to do it because the darning machine actually weaves like fabric back into the denim and it's, it seems to, it looks the best. But the way that I had access to was, well, this way. What they do is they iron on some sort of substrate fabric and then with, I think, just a kind of normal sewing machine, they just go back and forwards over that fabric and kind of like join it on. Was it like a, it's not a bonded fabric because it's not really bonded, but yeah, that just reinforces everything and means that there's going to be no more crotch blowouts, at least not for a while. I would actually really recommend this method over what, say, now I'm not shitting in New Day here, but I'd still recommend this method over for what Nudi do. What Nudi do is they, they use the, the substrate fabric, but they use some pretty heavy denim, which is just a bit too much. This, this substrate fabric is, is very, very lightweight. It's almost like it's not really there. And that, that, that means that you don't really notice it. It's a bit stiffer first of all, but after a couple of wears, you don't notice that anymore. With, uh, with using denim, you're just getting two layers of denim and that's just bulky and it feels like, especially in the crotch, it just feels like you've got a wedgie all the time. Okay, somewhere in here. NT220, ST122. I really do hope that I actually have a pair of these. I should have a pair of these. I've got a pair of everything else. Got the chinos, another pair of chinos, some t-shirts. Uh-oh. Another uh, CT222, the double black. Double black type three hoodie. Then another chinos. Okay, plan B. So plan B will be using the NTs, I think. I think I, I've got a, a version of every single fit from 316 and every single denim from 316, but not together, if you know what I mean. So I, the SLs I have are the 101X, which is the, the lightweight salvage. Uh, no problem. I mean, no, I don't want to use that. So I want, I want quite a, a typical pair of jeans. I want uh, 14 ounce and I want raw. So yeah, the choice I have there are, yeah, these, the NTs. And now that stays out. 
and all of this goes back in. God, I really do create chaos when I'm filming videos. Okay, here we go. Once I clear out all this stuff. So, 316s here. And then we've got the Armani's here, and we don't need that. Okay, so I will say that this is completely unscripted, spontaneous, and it probably means that I'm going to ramble for quite a while, so yeah, bear with me. Maybe I'll try and put chapters in so you can skip through the rambly bits. But yeah, so the 316s and the Armani jeans. And a little packet of silicon. Okay, so I do know the 316 jeans pretty well. I have worn one or two pairs in as project pairs. I, I've known the brand for years. I work with the brand. So yeah, I'm very, very familiar with the features of these jeans. These jeans, zero, is that? Zero idea, zero, nothing. No clue, I have never owned a pair of these, I've never worn a pair of these. I, I will say that this is coming with a certain degree of presumption on my part. I will, so I'm gonna run through the way that I normally do with, with jeans reviews, comparing the two, and I'm going to try and be objective as possible. But yeah, as I said, there are, there are certain presumptions I have about, about these jeans. So we'll see if that, if that pans out. Right, okay, where are we gonna start? Uh, most obvious things. We're gonna start with, uh, the, with the branding, with the, with the removable branding, can you say that? What I mean is pocket flashers. I feel that pocket flashers are actually, they, they are a bit superfluous for sure. They're, they're branding, they're marketing. But I feel that there's such a tradition with, um, with uh, pocket flashers and that, that aspect of branding within jeans, I like to see brands doing, making a little bit of effort with that. I mean, like, yeah, as I said, there's, there's a proper tradition with this. Where is it? Uh, denim branded, denim, yeah, there we go. I mean, there's a whole book on this, so yeah, it's important. Let's, let's turn that like, like that, a little bit of set dressing and say, Little bit of a shout out to Nick because it's an amazing book. Right, okay, so so the branding, so the, the pocket flashers and the labeling and stuff. Right, let's start off with the 316s because they have got the most obvious branding straight out of the bag, box, whatever. Yeah, they've got a, a card pocket flasher here. They've got a nice, clean, minimalist design that I very much appreciate. Graphic language is very strong. You can instantly tell it's just, okay, this is, this is a pair of 316 jeans, and I think that that's something important when, when it comes to branding, when it comes to marketing, right? You want to be able to look at something on a shelf amongst everything else and go like, okay, I know what that is. And 316 have achieved that with this pocket flasher. You have the most important information. Uh, interestingly enough, you don't have 316 written anywhere. You've just got the logo here. So I think, Two, three years, three years ago, two years ago, 316 did a complete redesign on their logo. And part of it was this little sort of propeller thingy going on here. It's actually three S's rotated. So, so that, that, that's a nice little touch there by the, the guys who did the logo design. What were they called again? Yeah, okay, they were called this. That's nice and it's recognizable as, as 316, which I, I appreciate. Then you've got the NT100X, that's the narrow taper, 100X is the denim. Yeah, okay, it says down here, narrow taper, high rise, 14.5 ounce denim, raw indigo selvage. It's custom woven in Japan, cut and sewn in the US. All good things. Then with the, with the label that we've got here, let me just take this off. Come on, ouch. It's got the, the size noted on the label here. Uh, we've got the little um, tagline, the last shall be first. And yeah, 
then we there we have got 316 and the the little triple S thing. Inside, you've got some information. Make sure you're the right size. When you try these jeans on, blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's advice on getting the right fit. That they're snug in the waist, but not uncomfortably tight. That's very true. Um, the fly should burn up, button up with relative ease. Should be able to sit down without discomfort. Uh, the denim stretches up to an inch in the waist over the first month. That's, that's true, all denim does. As you wear the jeans, it molds your body and soften up as well. I mean, that's something important to, to note with, with raw selvage denim. On the other side, how to care for your jeans. Uh, wash your jeans when they're dirty. That just makes sense. Uh, it would be every one to two months if they are worn daily. Yeah, and it's, it's just, they make sense here. Consistent washing will prevent dirt from building up in the cotton fibers and will extend the life of your jeans. Flip them inside out when it comes time to wash. Either hand wash them or seed wash them in cold water with a gentle detergent and hang them up to dry. So yeah, that's just a little bit of advice about how best to care for, for any jeans and in particular, raw selvage denim jeans. Anything else going up on these? Go away. We've got a wasp nest uh, right outside the, the window of the flat. And we can't really do anything about it just now. Uh, it's, it's what, almost November? I really would have thought these things would have died off by now. Right, anyway, that's the branding from 316. Put that all over there. Now there are many jeans. Uh, straight out the bag, all you see are these generic hang tags here. Um, nothing so exciting. Okay, tells you to be Aware of color transfer, garment is made using special processes, nothing about the special processes, uh, slight imperfections and inhomogeneities. If that is a word, I don't know how to pronounce it properly, are a characteristic of the workmanship and emphasize the authenticity of the garment. Special attention should be paid to the possible color transfer of typical of this process. So yeah, that's just basically crocking. Then to go rubbing off your jeans onto your grandmother's white sofa. Uh, I did spot a pocket flusher. Yeah, this pocket flusher's nice enough. So it gives you the information, it gives you the model number, J09. It's a waist 33, 32, and it's a slim tapered fit. Uh, unfortunately, these are not in my size. These are a narrow tapered fit. So we're not really gonna be comparing the fit of these two jeans. I don't feel that that's important because everybody's looking for a different fit and everybody's body shape is going to dictate to some extent what fit you should go for. So in this video, I'm going to be concentrating on the details of the jeans. Uh, yeah, so that's the pocket flasher, which is a nice, a nicely, it's a nice woven label. I, I don't mind that at all. The, the branding is pretty much on point. I think it's, it does what it needs to do. And then you've got the Armani logo down at the bottom as well. So yeah, as much as the, the graphic languages on both of these pocket flashers work. I, I think that they are, they're a good example of what a pocket flasher needs to do. Uh, the labeling here is, yeah, 316 have taken care to, to make the hang tag something useful, something special, and something to engage with. Here, the hang tag is just a purely pragmatic exercise. So, yeah, uh, 316 went on that. And what is next? I think, yeah, the, the first thing, just putting my hands on these, is the, the, the feel of the denim. The denim is certainly much lighter than the 316, so these come in at 14.5 ounce, that's a, a mid-weight denim. These, I guess, would be around about the 12 ounce, I would say, 11, 12 ounce. Does it have some stretch in it? Yeah, it's got a little bit of stretch in the denim. As I said before, that's no bad thing, but, I guess, I don't know this exactly, I don't think it was written anywhere, but from other jeans I felt with some stretch in them, 
I would say this is two to three percent elastine or whatever other stretchy material that they're going to use. Uh, down here, the denim feels, yeah, quite raw. You can actually see it's quite raw. It's not really, I don't see that this has been processed or given too much of a wash. And then up here, the denim feels considerably different up here where it's been giving, given some, some aging, some, some sandblasting or some lasering or however they've done these then it's really, it's quite a, a contrast between the, the two, two pieces. If the denim was left raw, I would say that this isn't such a bad denim. With the treatment it's been given, with the wash that's been given, yeah, this just feels a little bit limp and a little bit delicate, to be honest. I very much doubt it's salvaged, but let's have a look. Been overlocked there. And then this has been quite nicely finished, the open edge. But yeah, it's uh, not salvage, but I really wasn't expecting it to be salvage. Now that's the denim on the Romani jeans. The denim on the 316 jeans, much, much heavier, much crisper because it is a raw salvage denim with no wash. It is salvage. The, the inner seam has been finished very, very nicely. There's no overlocking to see. It's, it's heavier, it's crisper, it's, it, it, it feels, it, it's a much higher quality. But the thing is, with that quality, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword. You, you get a much higher quality denim fabric from, from raw salvage denim. Just the, the, in general you do at least. Just the way it's been made, then it's just, it's a higher quality denim. I've actually, I've done a whole video comparing salvage and non salvage denims. I'll put a link to that up in the corner somewhere. I won't go too deep into that. Uh, we'll go too deep into the pros and cons. But certainly in this case, between these two denims, I can say that, that this denim's of a higher quality, but with it being a raw denim, if you're not used to, to raw denim, it's a, uh, there's a bit of a baptism of fire when you first put them on. They will be very, very different to, to what you're used to. They're, they're stiffer, they are more rigid. At the end of the day, they're a bit more uncomfortable. I, I think that's, that's just fair to say. Putting these on immediately will, there'll be a comfy pair of jeans. Putting these in, there's gonna be a breaking period of a few days to a week or so before they start getting like a little bit softer to, to start molding to your body a little bit. With that being said, I'm still going to put the win in the 316 column because I think that this denim's of a much higher quality, it's gonna last much longer, and it's going to develop its own set of, of fades. It's gonna develop its, its own unique character that is dictated with how you wear the jeans. These, you're gonna get some fades on the, the parts that have not been washed down, but there's no real character in, in wearing these in. They've been kind of worn in for you. So yeah, 316 for the win on the denim side. Next, 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 leather patch. The 316 is a full grain rough out in this case, leather patch, nice thick leather, good quality with the logo stamped in. That's gonna, yeah, it's, so they used to do veg tans uh, and still do in some um, natural veg tan leather patches that patina up beautifully. And the rough out leather is gonna patina but in a very different way. And it's just, it's a, it's a nice mix with the, with the texture of the denim there as well. Right, there are many ones. I don't know if this is leather. If it is leather, then it's been given quite uh, some treatment and I think it looks like it's been bonded with something else. And the, the logo here is not been stamped in, it's been embossed. Okay, there's some weird glue going on on the other side. It looks like it's actually been poked through. That's just weird, I, I think, yeah, I think this is just plastic. I can't imagine how that would have been done if it was leather. You can also see here, this isn't me doing this, there's a scratch going over the surface 
which must have happened at some time when these genes were produced. So I, I guess this patch is not going to look very good for very long. Yeah, and there's certainly going to be no character building up on this. Down to the... I don't know if that's an eagle or whatever it is. Anyway, down to the Romani logo, which is probably a big reason a lot of guys buy these. It's solid, it's metal, it's shiny, it's got a plastic backing. The thing is with something so solid and so rigid being put onto the pocket like this, which is gonna get a lot of wear and tear, like a lot of strain's gonna be going on this pocket if you're taking your wallet in and out. I would imagine that the, even if it's a thicker denim, that's gonna wear the denim through quite quickly. So your your Armani badge that you've, uh, your Armani badge that you're so excited about would fall off after a while, I imagine. It's ostentatious, which is, I guess, is it ostentatious? Not really. It's, it's not that subtle. I, I presume if you're going to get a pair of Armani jeans, you want people to know that they're a pair of Armani jeans and this, this little logo here certainly does that. It's very recognizable. So for that, it's good branding, really. And while we're here, let's just move on to the pockets because the little shiny badges on the pocket. There are no hidden rivets, but again, I, I wouldn't have expected that and they're definitely not a necessity. They are a good size. Uh, I would get my wallet in there without any problem. Uh, they've been bar tacked up at the top and they've been given a little bit of that weird wash that is over the rest of the jeans. Other side, it's the other pocket. Makes sense, right? Uh, but it's just got the pocket flasher, which I'm not gonna remove because like I said, I'm gonna send these back. Pockets on the 316s. Hmm, uh, hmm. Well, it's a pocket. This is, this is a, a pocket too. I don't really know what to say about it. Also doesn't have hidden rivets, but again, that's just superfluous. There is the 316 detail with the runoff on either side here. Uh, it's it's a, a nice feature, it's something I like about the 316 jeans. They are of a good size as well. A little bit smaller than the Armani's, but yeah, still I can fit my wallet in here without any problem. And it's exactly the same on the other side. Uh, they're pockets. Yeah, what's more to say? They're gonna you keep stuff in them. Belt loops. The 316 belt loops are nice. They are wide. They're very, very solid. They've been tucked underneath the waistband, which I always like to see. That's just, a, it's an attention to detail that I really enjoy. And... Yeah, again, belt loops, put your belt through them. Uh, keep up your pants. Don't let your ass hang out, that's, that's fine. Belt loops on the Armani jeans. They are also um, solid. They are a good width. I could fit any of my belts through there without any problem. They are also tucked underneath the waistband, which I wasn't expecting, but I like to see that. They have got also a little bit of the funky wash on them, but that's all over the jeans. Yeah. Uh, no problems with the belt loops at all. Much better than I was expecting. I'm, I'm surprised. We've covered the flasher, we've covered the leather patch or plastic patch or pleather patch, whatever it is. Covered the badge, covered the hang tag, belt loops. Let's move on to the front. Right, hardware, button. So it is a button fly. Okay, that's quite a nice flex actually. I, I enjoy this. Uh, right, top button is a donut button. It is a good size, it's solid. That's not going anywhere. Decent quality with Emporio Mani on it. Uh, and the button fly, three button fly. The buttons have got an E and, a, and an A on it with the, with the little, with the, the birdie logo in the middle. I, I, I enjoy this kind of thing. I wasn't expecting that at all. This is something that's strictly for the wearer. Uh, it's, it's, there's no use in having this at all. No practical use. It's just a little bit of, uh, a little bit of fun for the guy who's wearing them. Button holes on these, they, they're they a little bit fiddly to get into actually. There's been a bar tack put in between each individual buttonhole. I'm not quite sure why that is. Might make buttoning these up a little bit trick. Yeah, it does. It makes it a little bit trickier. Inside of the fly, it's, had, it's got a taped edge here, so it makes it nice and clean, it looks good. Well, oh, that's a nice clean construction. Uh, continuing on the inside, little label, 32, 33 with a size. We've got uh, some loops to hang them up on both sides, so yeah, good, I guess. 
got a woven Emporio Armani label that is stuck behind the pleather patch. So you're not going to see the stitching on the outside. I, I, I like that kind of thing. It's, uh, again, nice attention to detail. The pocket bags are, they are a nice herringbone twill fabric, but they do feel very, very flimsy. I wouldn't uh, imagine they would stand up to, to having my knife or something or like a bunch of loose change and I don't think they'd last very long with that. But I think it's more intended for a um, little slip wallet with, uh, with some cards. Okay, I know I told you guys I was going to try to be as objective as possible, but I'm being very judgmental. It's, I, I, I will concentrate. I will concentrate. Uh, got the labeling in here. Mm, you can check the authenticity. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, I, I guess our many jeans are faked a lot, so they've got a way that you can check the authenticity. Let me just get my mobile and let's, let's make sure that these aren't a ripoff. Uh, B cam. It should be that it is pointed at this. Okay, so it gives me a code to check. Yes, my jeans are authentic. I, I, I like that. I, I really, I do like that. That's a nice use of technology to, to make sure that you're getting what you pay for. Whether you're getting what you pay for in terms of quality, that I'm still, the jury's still out on that. Yep, that's the inside and the fly of their Armani jeans. Over to the 316s. Starting with the top button, again, it's a donut button. It's more gun mental, it's less shiny, which marches really nicely with the tone of the denim. It is, uh, uh, told you this denim's a bit stiffer. It is also very, very solid. It's definitely not going anywhere. Um, and it's, it's branded hardware as well. Also a button fly is slightly smaller versions of the, the waistband button, nothing quite as uh, fancy as the, the Armani ones, but they do what they need to do. Something I hadn't noticed before, uh, but I just noticed it now, they're kind of conspicuous with their absence. Um, there's no rivets at all on their Armani jeans, like none, which, yeah, I mean, okay, jeans don't need rivets. In fact, like Levi's took rivets off their jeans in the 70s, but for me, rivets and, and denim just go so well together, it's like, yeah, it's strange to have them with, without them. Uh, yeah, okay, we'll get to the rivets in a second, because we're only gonna be able to look at the 316 rivets. Uh, fly construction on the inside here, instead of having a taped edge, you've got a selvage edge, because we can. Then down here, buttonholes don't have that annoying uh, bar tack in the middle, so you can get them done up and undone just as easy. Buttonholes are good, they are solid. Yep, no problems there at all. Uh, the whole thing is cleanly done. Yeah, really, really nice. Uh, there is minimal labeling on the inside. We've only got a woven label here with the style, 100% cotton made in USA, 316.com. Then some washing instructions. Uh, the pocket bag has been screen printed with uh, the information for the, for the jeans, so 32, 100% cotton. Uh, it's been woven exclusively for 316 in Okayama, Japan, and cut and sewn in San Francisco, California. Uh, anything on the other side here? Nope, the pocket bag is clean. This is a, a big difference here. This is a plain cotton twill. Don't fall down plain cotton twill fabric that is much thicker, much heavier, much more substantial, much, much bigger than their Armani jeans. This is going to last you. It's going to last the distance. Uh, the, you could carry whatever you wanted around in here and you're going to have no problems at all. Uh, when we're here, let's have a look at the rivets because th this is very nice. Like on the, on the outside, it's just like a plain gunmetal rivet with the with 316s. Got a little bit of that like poke through from the cotton when they've been fixed. I, I always really like to see that. Then on the back side, you've got the 3S logo, which that's that's a little bit like the like the the button fly with the Emporio Armani. 
This is just for the guy or the guy's very good friend. This is just for the guy, the owner, to see. Like this is a small little detail that's really unimportant, but it's nice to have. And that's also pretty much it for the inside of the jeans. I mean, you've got the selvage edge running all the way up here. Then it, you've got like lock stitch and a little bit up at the top, but nice, tight, really, really well done. No loose threads at all. The, 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 the factory in San Francisco really, really know what they're doing when it comes to making jeans. This is really nicely done. Totally clean. It's just, uh, I can really say both of these pairs of jeans, whoever put them together really knew what they were doing. That's a good point actually. So made in San Francisco, made in, made in Tunisia. Let's see where the denim's from. Okay, so 98% cotton, 2% elastine. Yeah, so what I thought around about. Okay, what's next? Thread, thread color. Yeah, there's a contrast thread in here. Just one color of contrast thread. And that's throughout the whole jeans. There's, uh, yeah, buttonholes is the same tone of thread. This just like, the, this mix of this tobacco and the, the deep indigo, it, it's a classic. It just really works beautifully together. So yeah, I like that. On the Armani, it's a tonal thread. You don't really see it very well. You don't see anything, but yeah, I mean, that's just, it's, that's a matter of taste. I think both of these work equally. Over the coin pocket on the 316, it's a good size. Inside, you've got like a little bit of the salvage ID. It's been nicely constructed because you see where they've run down from the waistband, round, putting the coin pocket on, back up. I just like seeing that, that run off. I, it's, it's again, it's just one of these like geeky little details that I, I really enjoy. Over on the Armani jeans, uh, we've got a nice little like blingy logo here as well. Um, kind of the same as the back. Uh, I, that's going to catch and annoy me when I'm taking things in and out of my pockets. But uh, yeah, that's just me. And it's it's a good size. It's actually much, much bigger than the 316. You could, you could fit your credit card in there if you wanted to. Yeah, there's no salvage ID to show off anyway. And yeah, that's... Not really too much more to say about that either. Next, 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 next. Hey, Down towards the hem. So 316s have got the chain stitched hem, as you'd expect. I, I think I mentioned this earlier, but the, the inner seam has been flat felled, I believe you call that. And then, yeah, the traditional chain stitch has been run around the outside, so we can all get that roping that we know and love. On the Armani's, yeah, it's been it's been finished nicely. It's been finished clean. It's it, it's it's well done. There's no it's just been overlocked on the inside, but yeah, that's no problem at all. It's quite hard to see. No, there's no no chain stitch here. It's just I think the the normal stitch is called a lock stitch, which is it's going to do the job fine and a. I guess the guy looking for the Armani jeans is not too concerned about old school chain stitching. Hmm. Okay, now we get to look at something that the, well, the 316s, I can't say anything about that because it doesn't exist, but I want to have a bit of a look at the wash. And by wash, that means the, the manner in which these jeans have been made to to look old, like they've been made to, they, they've had treatment either by laser or by sandblasting or sandpaper, or whatever else. They've had a treatment to make them look like they are a worn in pair of, of raw denims. Yeah, I I don't have a problem with, with stone washing. You, you know my opinion on that. That's, that's absolutely, that's fine, that's acceptable. I do have a problem on, so st stone washing is just like, um, no, that's not them. This isn't set dressing, by the way. This is just, I decided to wash all of the pants I own in one go and ran out of space to hang them all. Yeah, the stone washing just like fades them down a little bit without taking away from the, the, the actual integrity of the denim. 
Here, the denim has actually been damaged on purpose. There is a, a rip in the knee. The, the fabric's been worn down across the thigh here. It just means that you're, you're sewing a pair of jeans together and then so you've got like a, a good pair of, of well-made jeans in, in a raw denim. See, this is raw denim. And then you're just fucking them up uh, for no good reason to kind of like fake fades. I have seen this done very well. I can't say that this is done very well here. Like, I don't think this looks particularly authentic in any sense. And then you're also coming into the problem that, like, you're, when these fade in, like if I was to wear these in, like the honeycombs, the whiskers, the, the phone fades, they would set in in very specific places to my body shape, my, my size, like the whiskers would set in behind, behind my knees. The, the knee fades would be on my knees. These have just been put in this rip here across the knee has just been put in an arbitrary place. It's just been like, okay, there's a roundabout where pe people's knees are gonna be, we'll just put it there. So if somebody's shorter, somebody taller, puts these on, this could either be like halfway down his shin or halfway up his thigh. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't, it doesn't look good on that person. And that's the difference between, between these, which are faking fades and a pair of stonewashed. A pair of stonewashed is just like, overall lighter blue. So that's a, a stylistic choice. It's not trying to fake anything. But yeah, these just feel very inauthentic, very, very faked. And that really takes away a lot of the value in the style of these jeans for me. It's also gonna take away a lot of the durability that these jeans have. I can't imagine that these would last very long. I mean, you've, you've already got a ripped knee here. I don't know if that's been ripped and repaired. Yeah, that's been ripped and repaired, so that's gonna hold up okay. But still, over here, I don't know if this is on purpose or somebody's been a little bit overzealous with the sanding machine. Yeah, so there's like some serious weakness on the other side where somebody's just gone a little bit deep when they've been washing these down. I, I can't say that these are a bad pair of jeans aside from the, from, from the wash. I, I think that the construction is good, the hardware is good. I don't know about the fit. I, I will try them on, I mean, I bought them in my size. And I'm curious to see how they feel. But yeah, this, this wash takes, takes all of that, all of the good work that they've done, and just like throws it out the window, just like completely puts it in the trash because it, it doesn't, again, in my opinion, it doesn't look good and it means that the jeans are not gonna last very long. You're just not gonna get any value out of them. You're not gonna get value out of them in terms of longevity, and you're not gonna get value out of them in terms of this becoming a, an item of clothing that is uniquely yours. But then again, I guess that's not the point with a pair of Armani jeans. You get them because they are a pair of Armani jeans. You're paying a lot for the for having that logo on your butt. That's a tricky one because that is completely value, personal value based. So it's up to, to, for you to decide. For me personally, I don't feel that this, that that's enough to justify the fact that these jeans are the same price as these jeans. This, this denim is, they don't tell anything, any story about the denim that these are made of. 316, that is a big part of the narrative of the brand, the fact that they get their, their denim from the mill in Japan and Okayama, the fact it's Japanese denim, the fact that it's propriety denim, that this is 316's denim. It's been developed for them. Here, this is just a stretch denim. That's, that, that's it. They've been made in Tunisia, which I can't say is a bad thing. I think they've made a very good job of it. Yeah, these have been made in San Francisco. Again, they've made a very good job of it. The, the amounts that, that Armani will be making, the, the, the sheer volume and numbers are gonna drive down the unit price significantly, significantly compared to the 316s. 
So as, as much as these are a nicely put together pair of jeans, the cost per unit is going to be much, much lower, which again, it calls into question whether that, that the price tag is at all justified. And I would say no. Right, you know what? Let's see how these things fit because I'm pretty curious about that. These are far, far too small for me, so we can't see how those fit. But yeah, okay. I, I, want, I want to know how these feel on the skin. Actually, you know what? When I've got you in this perspective, quick fit check. Starting off with, well, I've got my Birkenstock Boston house shoes on. Not exactly sexy. But I was wearing them earlier with my Red Wing Pecos, so the black rough out. And then going up, the jeans are the blue and greens. Uh, that's the 18 ounce unsanitized denim, but it's been given one wash. And I think they were made by Oni Denim. I love these jeans. They're a bit heavier, so they've only recently gone back into the rotation. It, they're too heavy for the summertime. The fit of these are just spot on. And the denim's got really a lot of character. Starting to see, yeah, a little bit of fading coming out here and there, but not too much actually. Quite surprised because they've sort of seen quite a bit of wear. Uh, the shirt is Benzite Denim Developers. The t shirt is from 877 Workshop. I have my, my, my Shame Folex on the wrist, and I've got rings also from 877 Workshop, and then two Fine Light Trading rings. Is that it? Uh, glasses from Ace and Tate. Uh, fit check complete. You don't, you don't want to know about the underwear, right? You're gonna see it in a second anyway. Uh, right, okay, let's try these on. Oh, belt. Natural veg tan leather belt by Show Your Hem. And I don't know why I took that out, I didn't need to. That's um, tight. And I was right, that is fiddly to get the fly done up. There's not a lot of room down here. That's not boasting, it's just the cut. They are a skinny fit pair of jeans, which that's just what they are. I mean, like, that's not my fit. Some guys are going to love it. Um, it's just not for me. It's got a, quite a low rise, but actually sits quite well on the hips. Uh, I'd say the size is fair. It's 33. I'm around about a 33, 34 and mostly everything. Pockets are a decent size as well. Yeah, that's um, little Armani badge here. That's, that's really annoying. I... Very tight around about the ankles. Decent, decent amount of movement. Uh, back pockets. They're a bit weird. Yeah, they feel very set, very wide apart and very low down. I mean, you guys will be able to tell me more than I can right now, but it feels a little bit like my ass has fainted and I wouldn't be too comfortable wearing a wallet or something in the back. Fit is okay. Like really, I, I can't criticize the fit in any way. I think for a slim fit, skinny fit, these are, these are fine. And for this kind of fit, it needs to be stretched in them anyway. They've done a good job of it, but I'd expect that. They make millions of jeans a year. So yeah, that was interesting actually. And this is something completely just in my head and completely subjective. When I was, taking these off and putting these on, I, I noticed the difference. I didn't feel any sense of attachment to these at all when I put them on. When I put these on, I, I felt, yeah, just a sense of, of excitement and a sense of like, this is a quality made product. And that's something that I really, I always feel when, when I put on something that's made in the right way for the right reasons. And I don't think I'm alone in this feeling when I put something like that on. I think most of you guys, if you're into raw denim, if you're into salvage denim, if you're into any kind of quality menswear, you're going to feel that as well when you put something, something like that on for the first time. But yeah, that's just that's an aside. I just, I just noticed that uh, right there. Right, let's finish this, what I'm guessing is a, a very, very long video. Let's finish this up with talking about, about value. Because these two, they cost the same amount. They cost 230 euros. 
This actually cost 270, but I got them for 230 in a sale. That's, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money to pay for a pair of jeans. And so what value are you, are you getting out of that? Well, with the 316s, I think you're getting an incredibly well-made product that's been made in the right way for the right reasons. The denim is fantastic. The construction is, is, is amazing. The, the hardware is great. The, the detailing is great. The narrative behind all of these, that's also great. With the, with the Romani jeans, yeah, the, the construction, that's, that's actually been a surprise to me. I really wasn't expecting the construction to be quite as good. But the rest, it's not really surprised me in the slightest. The, the denim is nothing special. There's no story behind it. There's no narrative behind it. The, the hardware, yeah, you get nice little features here and there, but mostly it's just about having this little shiny logo here. The, the wash is, is terrible. I, I, I don't think they've made a good job of that in the slightest, and I think it's detrimental to the health of the denim. So you're not getting any value in terms of longevity. The only thing that seems to justify the price of these, these jeans is the fact that they are a pair of Armani jeans. You're, you're really, you're paying for having this, this, this shiny little birdie on the back. And that, that again is a value proposition. That's something that you can only decide for yourself whether, whether having this and even me, I, was, I told you I was going to try to be objective with this. And I don't think I've done a very good job of that. But because I'm talking down and saying this is like shiny little birdie, that's what it is. Yet yeah, you have to decide if, if having that is, and having, I guess, others recognize that as being a, a Romani pair of jeans, if that's worth it to you, then yeah, th then these are worth the, the high price tag. If you're looking for an excellent pair of jeans, then go for, for these. Don't even, you don't necessarily have to go for a pair of 316s. Sorry, Andrew. Um, but go for a, a well-made salvage denim pair of jeans. Doesn't even have to be raw. Have one washed, have, have stone washed. But you're just going to get more, from my perspective, more value out of that over the, the longer run. I, I do have to wrap this up, so I'm just going to, I'm going to stop there because I think I, I'm just tending to repeat myself into infinity, which I tend to do. Yeah, I, I'm, going to st I'm going to stop that there. I'm, I'm curious what you guys think, because I think we have a good community of like really die-hard denim heads out there. But I think there's guys that are watching this channel that are a little bit more into maybe the sort of fashion side of things. So I'm curious to know what brands that you're finding value in and what aspects of those brands that deliver that value. I, I'd, I'd, I'd really like to know that or if you've if you've had any other experiences with Armani jeans, Versace jeans, or any other sort of high fashion brands, I'd, I'd love to hear about that as well. It'd be great to get this conversation going down in the comments. That'd be, yeah, just, just head down there, drop a comment uh, on your thoughts about this. It seems I'm just completely incapable of doing a succinct 10 minute video. It just, it, it never happens. Maybe this is a 10 minute video, maybe I just like did way too many takes, but I've got about two hours of footage, so I doubt that's going to happen. So if you guys are still around, I really, I super appreciate it. Uh, that just leaves me to say, guys, uh, the ones that are still there, I hope, even the ones that are not still there, I still hope you guys are happy, I still hope you're healthy, hope you're taking care of each other, hope you're taking care of yourselves. This camera's getting heavy, so I'll see you in the next video.